In this lecture we will add an inventory weight system using placeholder values for our character. This is a sample lecture from the MSG course to give you a flavor. You can find more information in the video description or on msgcourse.com. Let's go! Start inside the BPC underscore inventory component. Add a new function and name it calculate total weight. This function will be used to calculate the total weight of the entire inventory. Move it to the weight category and mark it as private. Add one local variable and name it new total weight. Set its type to float. This will cache the calculated weight while we loop through each slot. Now drag the inventory slots variable into the graph and call a for each loop node. Connect the execution pin to the loop. Add to the loop body execution a branch. From the array element pin, call the is slot empty function. This function checks whether the current slot is empty. Connect the empty output to a branch node. Still from the array element pin, call the get slot weight function. This will return the weight of the current slot based on its item and quantity. Then drag new total weight as a get node into the graph and add a plus operator node. Connect the weight pin to the second input of the plus operator. This way, we add the current slot's weight to the total. Drag the new total weight variable into the graph and add it as a set node. Connect the false execution pin from the branch node to this set node. Then plug the result from the plus operator into the new total weight input. This allows us to accumulate the total weight of all inventory slots step by step. Next, add a branch node and connect it to the completed execution pin of the for each loop. This check runs once all non-empty slots have been processed and their weights summed up. To compare the new weight with the current one, we first need a new variable on the component. Add a variable named total weight of type float. This variable will represent the current total weight of the inventory. Move it to the weight category and set its replication to rep notify. Rep notify stands for replicated with notification. It ensures that whenever the variable's value changes on the server, the new value is automatically replicated to relevant clients. Additionally, Unreal Engine will call a special function named on rep underscore variable name on those clients, in our case on rep underscore total weight, allowing us to react to the update, perfect for UI updates or other visual feedback in multiplayer. Set the replication condition to initial only or owner. Now drag the new total weight variable as a get node into the graph and call a not equal operator node. Connect total weight as the second input. This will check if the current inventory weight has changed. Connect the result of this operator node to the branch condition. Then, drag the total weight variable onto the graph and drop it on the true execution pin of the branch. This creates a set node automatically. And here's something important. Because total weight is a rep notify variable, Unreal Engine automatically inserts a set with notify node instead of a standard set node. This ensures that the corresponding on rep function will be called, allowing us to update UI or trigger events when the weight changes. Assign the new total weight value to this set node. Then call the return node. Finally, connect the false execution pin of the branch to the return node as well. Now our weight calculation function is complete. It sums up the weight of all slots, compares it to the current value, and if different, updates it and triggers the notify function so everything stays synchronized. Compile everything and make sure to save it. Then switch over to the event graph. Move the section with the begin play comment slightly upward to make some space for new logic. Now drag the variable enable weight system into the graph as a get node. This variable controls whether the weight system should be active or not. After the setup slot server node, add a branch node and connect it to the execution flow. Then plug the enable weight system variable into the condition pin of this branch. Next, drag the on slot change dispatcher into the graph and select the assign option. This creates a dynamic binding, so that whenever a slot changes in this inventory component, the assigned custom event is automatically triggered during runtime. Rename the event to calculate weight underscore event. Then connect the true execution pin from the branch to the bind event node from the assign event. Now add a re-triggerable delay node and set its duration to 0.1 seconds. 
This node behaves similarly to a regular delay node, but it restarts the countdown each time it is called before completing. This is particularly useful in our case, because when items are moved within the same inventory, or when multiple slot changes occur at once, such as when stacking items or splitting them, the onslaught change dispatcher may be triggered several times in a row. The retriggerable delay ensures that only one weight calculation is executed once all slot changes have settled. From the completed pin of the delay, call the calculate total weight function. Select these nodes and add a comment labeled calculate weight. Now, since this component binds to events dynamically, we also need to unbind them properly when the component is removed. For example, if a storage container is destroyed or an actor is unloaded at runtime. Failing to do this can lead to invalid references or runtime warnings. Add an event end play node. This event is triggered automatically when the component or its owning actor is about to be destroyed or unloaded from the world. Drag the onslaught change dispatcher into the graph once more and select the unbind all node. This clears any dynamically bound events on this dispatcher. Finally, connect the execution pin from the end play node to the unbind all node. This ensures that all dynamic bindings are properly removed when the component is destroyed, preventing any leftover references that could lead to errors or unintended behavior. Now we need to add an additional dispatcher that will inform other systems when the total weight of the inventory changes. Add a new dispatcher and name it on weight change. In the details panel on the right, add a new parameter to this dispatcher named total weight and set its type to float. This way, when the event is triggered, the new weight value will be passed along with it. To keep everything clean, drag the unweight change dispatcher into the graph and select the unbind all node. Place this node between the end play node and the other unbind all node, so that both dispatchers are unbound properly when the component is removed. Now open the unrep underscore total weight function. This is the function that automatically gets called when the total weight variable is updated and replicated across the network. Inside this function, drag in the unweight change dispatcher and select the call node. Connect the execution flow and then plug the total weight variable into the total weight input pin on the dispatcher call node. This setup ensures that both the server and the client are informed when the weight changes. Here's how it works. When the server updates the total weight variable, the unrep underscore total weight function is triggered on the server side, and the dispatcher is called. At the same time, since the variable is marked for replication, the updated value is automatically sent to the owning client. When the client receives this new value, it also triggers the unrep underscore total weight function on its side. That means both the server and the client will execute the dispatcher and can react accordingly, without needing a separate replication event for the client. Compile and save, then return to the map view. Navigate to the Interfaces folder and open the BPI Player Controller interface. Add a new function and name it get controller player character. This function will be used to retrieve the character reference directly from the player controller. Move it to the BPI PC References category and mark it as a const function. Add an output named player character and set its type to BP player character as an object reference. This will serve as our character reference output. Compile and save, then open BP underscore my player controller. Expand the interfaces category on the left and open the new function to implement it. Now drag the player character variable from the references category into the graph and drop it directly onto the player character pin of the return node. This will automatically connect it. Compile the blueprint and head back to the map view. Navigate to the core, UI, common, styles folder. Right click to add a new blueprint class. Since we will be displaying weight using a progress bar, and because we want to reuse this style throughout the project, we will create a dedicated style blueprint for it. Search for progress bar, select it, and name the file ps underscore ui underscore progress bar underscore master. PS stands for progress bar style. Open the newly created blueprint. Initially, it opens in full blueprint mode. Close it once and reopen it so it switches to data only blueprint mode. You may recognize these settings from the slot configuration. For now, we will apply just a few simple modifications. Expand the style section, then expand the background image subsection. Set the tint color to the following values. 
A3, AC, 87, 33. This will define the base color of the background. Collapse the background image and expand the fill image section. Change the tint color here to A1, BF, 6A, FF to define the primary fill color of the bar. Finally, adjust the percent value to 0.7. This is just for preview purposes to visualize how the bar will look. Compile and save the progress bar style, then return to the map view. Navigate to the common, widgets, inventory, shared folder and open the WB inventory weight display widget. Let's now adjust the widget layout. In the hierarchy, right click on the panel content and choose wrap width, then select vertical box. This wraps our content so we can add additional elements while keeping everything organized vertically. Now search for a spacer and place it inside the vertical box, but above the panel content. This ensures the spacer appears at the top, while still being part of the vertical structure. Select the spacer. A spacer is a layout element used to create empty space between widgets. It does not render anything visual, but is helpful for spacing and alignment. Set its size to 1 and 0.5. This adds a subtle vertical offset, which you can preview in the viewport as a green outline. Next, in the hierarchy, right-click on the vertical box that is attached to the content slot. Choose Replace with and select Horizontal Box. This gives us horizontal layout control. Expand it and you'll see the WB text block still inside. Select the WB text block. Change its text to Weight. This will act as our label. Then, change the text style to UI Body Label XS for consistent UI styling. Next, search for PSUE Progress Bar Master and drop it onto the horizontal box. This will visually represent the current inventory weight. Rename it to PS underscore UI underscore weight. You might notice that the fill color is not showing correctly. In the details panel, under fill color and opacity, click the small arrow next to the color value to reset it to its default. That should fix the appearance. Now change the size setting from auto to fill, so it expands and uses the available space between the label and the value. Expand the padding settings and set left and right to 20 to add spacing between the label on the left and the value on the right. Then, set the vertical alignment to center to ensure the bar aligns nicely with the surrounding text. Next, select the existing WB text block, rename it to WB underscore text block label, and uncheck the is variable option, since we won't access it from the graph. Now search for another WB text block and drag it into the horizontal box. Select it and rename it to Way Text Info. This text block will display the actual weight values during runtime. Set its text to something like 0 over 0 kg, or adjust the unit if your game uses a different format. Finally, change the text style to label value, or choose a style that fits your UI. In my case, I'll stick with the same style as the label and go with label XS. That wraps up the visual setup. Let's head into the graph to hook up the logic. Delete all three default events to clean up the graph. Add a new custom event and name it update weight. This event will be used to update the weight values whenever the inventory changes. Add two inputs to the event. The first one should be named current value and set to type float. This will represent the current weight. The second input should be named max value, also of type float, and will define the total possible inventory capacity. Drag the variable PSUI weight into the graph and call the set percent function on it. To calculate the percentage, drag off the current value pin and use the save divide node. This node safely handles division by zero by returning zero instead of causing an error, which is especially useful when max value might still be zero at initialization. Connect max value to the B pin of the save divide node, and then plug the return value into the in percent pin of the set percent node. This ensures that the bar visually represents the current inventory weight as a percentage. Next, drag the weight text info variable into the graph and call the set text value function on it. Connect the execution pins to keep the execution flow. From the text value input pin, drag out and create a format text node. As the format, enter the following, current max kg. This setup allows us to dynamically insert both values into the output string. Because current and max are provided as pins now, 
we can simply connect the current value input to the current pin and the max value input to the max pin of the format text node. This will update the label to always show the current and maximum weight in a clean and readable format. Compile and save everything. The widget is now ready to use and fully functional. Before we can test the system, we need to make sure that the widget correctly receives weight updates. Go to the map view, navigate back one folder to the inventory directory, and open the WBP underscore player inventory widget. Switch to the graph view and scroll to the end of the event construct section. From the inventory ref variable, add a get node to the graph and call the assign on weight changed node to bind our weight update event. Connect it to the execution flow. Now drag the WB underscore inventory weight display widget into the graph and call the update weight function. Connect the event execution to this node, then connect the total weight pin to the current value input. For the max value input, enter a temporary value of 1000. Next, duplicate this update weight node and place it directly above. Connect the execution pin of the bind event node to this one as well. This ensures that even if no weight change event is triggered at startup, the initial value is still displayed correctly. Drag inventory ref to the graph once more and call get total weight. Connect its return value to the current value input of the duplicated update weight node, and again leave the max value at 1000. Select this entire section and add a comment. Demo weight. This setup is only intended for demonstration purposes. Later in the course, we will implement a full character stat system, including hunger, thirst, and other survival mechanics, handled via the player state. The weight system will be integrated there as well, with real-time gameplay impact such as affecting the player's movement speed. At that point, we'll replace this section to reflect actual character data. For now, this simplified setup gives us a reliable way to preview the functionality. Compile everything and enter play mode to test the result. We give ourselves some items using the debug T key and open the inventory. We can already see that the weight is correctly calculated and displayed. Now, let's give ourselves more items, and as expected, the weight updates in real time. Everything is working as intended, and with that, we have laid the foundation for our inventory weight system. In the next lecture, we will set up the allowed items logic. This will let us control which item types are permitted in specific inventories a feature we will later use for equipment slots, crafting stations, and other specialized systems. See you in the next lecture.